and welcome back everyone my name is neil mustik uh yeah i'm posting these videos at the same time that i'm making them as my my other video is actually uploading right now i am going to go to z so i can get the wireframe mode press b i'm going to select everything of this window and i'm going to drag it down just a little bit to have some more well, difference in our model to make it not look too static because it does really look static to me right now uh, the next thing that i'm going to do is just for visual representation i'm going to go to uh, google wood bark you guys don't see this i should have done this off camera but yeah i'm doing it right now deal with it and all these textures look really bad, so I might as well just take a texture that I make myself. Okay, so that's our frame. Let's uh, see. Okay, wrap. I am going to do it in different, uh, in different call it different texture maps things because i don't feel like messing around with it too much this is just a basic tutorial it's not too in-depth just yet so i don't need to mess around with too much of this just yet either so you'll need a material i'm going to call you wood let's take texture open i think I think I made a map where I've got my textures in, but uh, desktop. Oh look, I've got an, an image of a nipple. Okay, let me search where my uh, images are. Okay, uh, videos. I'm going to put you on, on my desktop now. Nah. Okay, so desktop, where the hell is desktop? Here. Okay, wood planks. And you can show up if you want. Wood planks, there. I'm going to scale this up just to get it aligned. Just a little bit. Like so. And if I go to material mode it's going to be all black of course i do like the texture that i made right here because i have no light so create sun and it's not taking oh it is it was just the lighting that was on top of it okay so as you can see there's a little bit of detail on this uh, ta -ta -ta. Here, need to down the intensity. But yeah, as you can see, these textures they do are on top of it. They're too big though. I mean, you could scale it up. Oh, wait, I forgot to say UV. No, I did say UV. Generate it. So UV, normally if I scale this up, that should be changing as well, but it's not, and I, I don't feel like messing around with that too much right now. It's also very dark, but yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of detail. There are textures on top of it. On this one, it looks nice. I have to say over here it looks nice but like i said it's going to get stretched if you do it the way that i did it on these bottom beams they do look nice as well but especially on the window it looks nice so you you can change this you definitely can but for this tutorial i'm not going to do uh, I'm not going to go too in depth on this because uh, the thing is that for this video you should actually be making well, you should you could take images from YouTube and uh, what am I saying from Google and stuff, the texturing parts, 
is going to be a more advanced tutorial and I will go into that at the later stage. But yeah, this is basically the plan that you get something that looks like this. Good, okay. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is, well, get our walls going, of course. So I'm going to delete, I'll close this. This is just a visual representation for a second. I'm going to go back to this view and I'm going to add in, should I take a cube? Yeah, a cube. And as you can see, my center point, I, <laughs> I need to stop messing around with this because I'm, I'm actually breaking Blender or they changed something that I didn't notice, but yeah. So our center point is apparently right there. I don't want the center point to be right there. So cursor to center. I'm going to delete the cube because I don't want to mess around with that too much either. And with our cube right here, we're going to make our walls. Now what you could do is you have this frame, you can make all the walls pop up at the same time, or you can go one wall by one wall, by one wall, all of them apart. I'm going to do all walls apart. S Y. S no, S Y. And I think this should be good enough for my wall. I'm going to put the wall right there. I'm going to drag this up. So yeah. This is at my center point. I want it to be a little bit underneath it. And now I'm going to make this uh, go all over my wall. So my entire wall is going to be one part. I'm not going to do 15 videos on how to do each wall individually, but you should do each wall individually. This is just the, the way that it works. Up to here, up to here, and that's it. So I'm going to select only this wall. I'm going to do again the same thing with the dice. There, mark seam. There we go. And I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to extrude to V image U unwrap and as you can see I unwrapped it. I'm going to take another another image for that. Or is it texture? No. U to be stone. I do have a stone texture, so might as well just use it. If I can get to it. So stone path. It's a ground texture, as you can see, but uh, that should work the same way. I'm going to scale it up, put it right there, and if we check our texture, you can see it looks nice. It's actually very big, like so. That that looks a little bit better. Let's go back to our house, and if I Press this button, the texture button right now. You can see that it's really dark because my light is the wrong way. Okay. So yeah, I think I made all of these inside. No. Control N inside, no, normal. But yeah, the same thing that I did to the window should be all over this object. Let's assign that. Okay, it's probably because it's stretched that it's on that it only looks good on the window, but I don't understand why it isn't working here. So yeah, we've got our little wall. This has to be done all over the building. I'm not going to go in too deep on, on this one. Wrap so I can see that I got the right one. Delete. Okay. So we've got our wall. I'm going to drag it out. 
going to put one over here. This should actually not be this long. And as you can if you, as you're going to see, this one is going to get warped. But we'll uh, we'll fix that at a later stage. In one of my later videos, I'm going to show you guys how to get it that it's not warped. So not like what I'm doing right here. But for now, this should be good enough. L, Shift D. And I'll need to do that over here as well. Now this is where warping gets ridiculous. <laughs> Because we will need to get these, this little up thingy as well. So what I need to do is I need to cut this in half. I need to take this one and drag it up so that that entire side is uh, built. Not above it, but just this. Okay, and if I look at my image right now, you can see that this wall is really, really nasty and really warped. Yeah, this is basically the principle, the principle, the whatchamacallit, on uh, how to do this. So I'm going to RZ90, I'm going to do the, the other two walls as well. And over here, I, I'm going to get the same thing, but those are different walls. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Let's select this one, tree. drag it in and now is the time that this is going to warp as well there we go so a nice warped wall l no i want to have the full object and drag it there and these little ones are going to get so warped it's not going to be pretty anymore if you guys are wondering why do I do this bad tutorial with warped images? Well, basically that's because you need to know how to do this before you can do anything else that I'm going to show you guys. Now I forgot to do something over here. R. Come on, give me the right one. Yes. Three. And again, pull it up. I'll need to do that on this one as well. Oops. Tree and drag it up. Okay, so what do we have so far? We have our walls. And texture in is now, well, it's, it's completely messed up. Don't worry about that. In a future video, I'm going to show you guys how to do this the good way, but with another model. Also, how to fix this problem with texturing, because I, I at the moment I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, so we've got this. Now, of course, a house does need a roof. I don't have a texture for a roof, but... That doesn't really matter in this case. So our object, a new one, and this time I'm going to scale it on the z-axis. Yes. We're using the z-axis as well. I'm going to make it nice and thin. I'm going to drag it to the top point. It can be above there. You can put it a little bit lower like this and sx2 sx i'm going to i'm going to make it a little bit bigger like this and i'm going to cut it in the middle again i like cutting things in the middle now let's take this one this one side view and drag it down So as you can see, we've got a nice little house starting to look, starting to show up, I mean. Shift D, 
RZ90 because we will need to do the same thing over here and as you can see this isn't going low enough because I did make it lower and the angle is off so I'm going to put it where I want it to be I'm going to select these ones again normally they should still be selected and I'm going to drag this up like so so it's on top of the roof and there we go now one little problem which will be fixed in a second is this as you can see on one side it's all fine but on the other side well on the top side it's not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this little edge and i'm going to drag it out like so okay so that's basically how to make a little house i know i did it fast normally this should be on top of the other line as well same over here well seeing I'm, I'm here anyway i might as well just do that just drag it up like this there so that should look a lot better i can also sx no this is x i don't want it to be beyond this little line s y and drag it out like so and that's basically how to make a little wooden house of course don't mind the texturing but uh, if i go to texturing it will look all white the roof but the rest of the house looks nice you can do the same on the little roof but yeah for an rts game you will be looking at it like from over here so i think you can forgive yourself for the little detail mistakes that you make there is however one little thing in this case if you want your walls to pop up one by one you will need to do something like this with double walls on the inside and the outside but if you if you make a like uh, how can i say it which game was it i can't remember but i i once played well i once i, I multiple times played this little game where you had your house and uh, when it was built it had like a little box around it and when it was built the box just slowly disappeared you can do something like that as well the buy box you can do something like that as well but then you need to make sure that you have no not too many faces for example the windows and the, and the inside of the frame because well in that case you won't be using a frame i guess i just like it because it's a style i work with for, at the moment uh, the insides you don't need like this one why okay so this face you can delete this face you can delete this face you can delete this one as well so all the faces you don't see you can delete and why is that why am i saying you guys this well the game works with with uh, vertices as you can see i'm at zero of 19 vertices if i go like this this entire object has 443 vertices 300 and uh, 30, uh, 44 faces basically when when i get into making importing this into unity this is going to double the face amount is going to double as you can see it says triangles tris 688 unity triangulates everything yeah uh in in this case it's not a bad thing but let's say let's select all let's say you have 10 houses so four six eight and let's make these ones in the middle let's put these ones in the middle so 10 of these objects and for a building game you will have a lot of houses 
at least I will have a lot of houses for the games that I build. As you can see, it all it's already 4,430 little dots. Keep in mind, you also have characters in the games. You have trees, you have this, you have that. You have all of those different things. And your game, your computer, is going to render all of them. So the faces that are inside of your model, which ones you don't need, you might as well just leave them out. Okay, it's also something with... with uh, uh, when you when you make your game, it's going to make the size of the game considerably bigger. In this case, maybe it's two or three kilobytes. But imagine you have five thousand different buildings because you want to be unique. You have five thousand different buildings, different humans, different monsters, trees, blah 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 blah. Imagine how many megabytes that's going to be making your game bigger than it's supposed to be. Just just have a little a little idea. Uh, when I was working on an an RPG game, and I made a character, it had about, I think, 9,000 vertices, and that was on my old laptop. And I made 15 characters, I started the, the scene, okay, Unity uses a lot because it's using the Unity engine and blah 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 blah, and I got so many other things open, but... Imagine putting that into a game. My laptop, it started overheating and I had to turn it down and, well, now I have a new laptop. Imagine if you make a game and other people play that, you'll have a problem. And yeah, I'm basically focusing on game design. I'm not focusing on modeling for movies and stuff like that. If you want me to do that and you want me to go into detail on how to make 3D walls and, and normal mapping and stuff, just let me know. Normally I should get to that point at some stage, but it won't be for now, just not yet. Okay, so uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me a thumbs up if this was informational. If you learned something else, give me the thumbs down. I'll see you guys later. Bye everyone.